welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today, um, behind me is an aquarium, and you might be just surprised to see where I'm at. I'm at the Cerritos uh, Public Library, and I will take you inside of this uh, amazing immersive and theme space and give you a sense of why uh, this library won a Theo Award from the Themed Entertainment Association. So let's go inside and take a look. Actually, I'll begin outside here with a dramatic set of fountains. And I think one of the things that sets this library apart from other libraries, and I would say certainly sets it apart even from other themed and immersive spaces, is their attention to the various details. And you can see here that I think one of the things that's important in creating a space is on the outside to offer the guests something that's evocative and exciting. And I was really thrilled to see these uh, fountains on the outside of the library. And for me, they um, exemplified this sense of detail that is established here at the Cerritos Millennium Library. And certainly the Theo Award, which they won in 2003. And I should mention the Grove in uh, California, the shopping mall that I featured in another video, also won the award from the Theme Entertainment Association in the same year. So I wanted to offer you that in case you wanted to see that video. But again, what's exciting about the Cerritos Public Library or the Cerritos Millennium Library is the fact that they focused on so much detail in terms of creating a very evocative space, as I'm pointing out here, uh, with one of the fountains that greets the guests uh, just outside of the library. And I want to take a look at the structure itself. And uh, the structure itself, the library, the architecture was designed by Charles Walton Associates. And it's very distinctive. And I'll show you some additional uh, images of it in video here. Uh, it was inspired in part by uh, Frank Gehry's uh, dramatic architecture in Bilbao, Spain, uh, the Guggenheim Museum there. And I had read that uh, this is one of the largest titanium clad buildings in the United States. So creating this distinctive look for what they call the library of the future, I think is very key. And I think the use of titanium uh, is, is a great choice there. Now we're looking at here a piece from 2006. And this was in commemoration of uh, the city of Cerritos, its um, anniversary. And this was designed by Terry Brownstein and I think this is one example of something you are greeted with as a guest when you visit the library. And this is the emphasis on local history. I plan to come back to this just a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to show you this dramatic piece because I think it establishes something very different and in contrast with a lot of the futurism, with a lot of the modern abstract designs you'll see on the exterior of the library and also on the interior particularly on the second floor, which is their 21st century themed area. And you can see here the celebration, 56 to 2006. And of course it's a book, but there's a lot of depth to this particular sculpture, focusing on key points in local history and also emphasizing uh, key issues, as you see here, in terms of knowledge. And I think this is very important in any space is to connect it to the local history such that it's not seen as alienating to the guests and particularly to locals who indeed want to see that this particular library which was redesigned and opened uh, in 2002 is something that does stand for the local and for the local people. I'm hearing some ambient sound here as I enter uh, this uh, exciting entrance area and I wanted to emphasize that I think what's important and why this library is uh, worthy of so many awards that's won over the years is the fact that it's thought about creating a dramatic entrance area. And I'll be featuring here the children's library in just a bit, but I wanted to show you some of the initial sites when you entered the library. And I'll be coming back to this at the end of the video, which is another part of the immersive experiences you get at the Cerritos Millennium Library. Again, the guest is greeted with a very dramatic aquarium and also these quite outstanding books that are symbolic and also practical in terms of uh, delineating the space. I'll also be talking here about placemaking and I'm coming down the escalator. You get a good sense, I think, of the entrance area and this area that is uh, known as Main Street here at the front of the library. 
And as I think about placemaking, I go back to the world of theme parks and specifically theme park maps. I'll be featuring throughout this video two of the maps from the Cerritos Library's webpage. And you can see here what they've done is they've divided the space into various areas. As you enter, you walk through Main Street. To the left there, the aquarium uh, is just in front of the Children's Library, which I'll take you inside in a bit. Uh, in the back, we have the multimedia area, and you'll see a little bit later at the end of that area, uh, the Art Deco and also the Craftsman architectural style. At the very front of the library, you have the Old World, which is a 19th century European-themed reading room. Now we're looking at the map of the second floor. And I was reading in one of the guides to the library that the designers and library staff, they were inspired by futuristic movements in art and architecture and so forth. And so the second floor, as you'll see later, distinctively shows us this 21st century future-looking design in terms of uh, the very streamlined steel and uh, sparse and clean design. But let's take a look here at that first area, which is the children's library. And I have to say that I think the children's library of any of the spaces in the Cerritos Library is probably what designates it or what really makes it stand out. And again, it's right at the entrance, just like we might see a dramatic architectural feature at the entrance of a theme park. And so we'll take a look here. And again, you have this very interesting green screen that allows uh, the child or family member, anyone really, to take a picture and to be part of a book. And you can see it just there to the right. And I think what's really key about this uh, is the fact that they've created an experiential space. This is very controversial to some library purists. Some critics have indeed said that the Cerritos Public Library is focusing too exclusively on experiences. And the attitude might be that it's not scholarly enough, uh, it's not offering that austere sense of reading and scholarship that should be part of a library. And I think that's a misguided criticism because in the age of the internet, as the library staff has spoken of, in the age of theme parks and competition from museums, libraries have to do things to make themselves relevant, whether we like it or not. And so in this case, by creating these dramatic displays, the dinosaurs, looking at the geologic strata of the earth, uh, a rainforest, as you'll see in a second here, or a tree canopy, what they've done is they've created experiences for the guest and they've made it all the more exciting as a result of this fact. So the experience economy certainly has played a big part um, in this library and its design. And you can hear right here some of the ambient sounds here in the children's reading room, engaging all the senses as part of that experience. I wanted to offer here just a bit of the discussion from the library webpage. As you can see here, as I mentioned earlier, the museum in Bilbao was an inspiration. What's really key here is how they talk about the images, the sounds, the aquarium areas, creating a multi-sensory experience for the visitor. And continuing here, they talk about how the library is a result of a complete reevaluation of library services in the wake of the emergence of the internet as a powerful resource and I'll talk about here in the second the book The Experience Economy by Pine and Gilmore was an inspiration that the library used to make it more interactive and user-friendly. And I wanted to feature here then a quote from Pine and Gilmore's very influential book The Experience Economy. As you can see here they talked about how today the concept of selling experiences is spreading beyond theaters and theme parks. And so for critics out there who might say we're seeing too much experience and too much placemaking in these spaces that traditionally have been more austere and static like libraries, I think these critics don't realize the true potential of using experiential forms of design and theming. And as you can see here from a chart from Pine and Gilmore's book, they're very much interested in this idea of moving beyond the selling of commodities and making goods and even delivering services, but into the staging of experiences. And I think we see this in full force here at the library in Cerritos, California. 
And let's go back then to some of the spaces. I want to focus then on what they call Main Street. And on my first visit to the library, this didn't really strike me as Main Street in the traditional sense. And I guess the idea here is that you have these uh, recreated palm trees that line this street, and it takes the visitor from the front to the back of the library. Again, we can orient ourselves with the map here. And you can see as you move along Main Street, you will pass the local history uh, museum, which we'll see later on the right, and on the left, the circulation desk. And at the very end, you get into the Art Deco and Craftsman area of the library. And so I guess what is um, symbolic of Main Street, we could say, from the Disney sense and also the small, small town sense, is that sense of a welcoming place and also a place that can take you somewhere. It's not just moving from point A to point B, but it's having a wonderful experience along the way. We'll take a look here then at our movement through the library. This is actually from the second floor and you see the craftsman area there. You see some of the dramatic sculpture. I want to offer that I think in terms of thematic interior design, uh, this particular library has really delivered on it. We'll take a look here then at the next area, which is going to be the Art Deco area, the multimedia area, and also the craftsman area we'll take a look at. Again, in terms of emphasizing this uh, thematic interior design, I think one of the things is that this tells a story, albeit perhaps a more muted story than what we get from the children's room. But I think that having a consistent interior design and architectural focus within any, within any themed or immersive space gives the guest a sense of comfort. Um, that sense of effortlessness when you visit a space uh, and it seems to be entirely organic of its own and not overly designed. And I have to say that as I walked through the library here in Cerritos, I was completely amazed. I mean, nothing was overdone. Nothing was out of place. Nothing seemed inorganic. And the smallest level of detail was considered. You can see the particular uh, decor here that was used to theme the book stands the tables, um, many of the, the walls, some of the load-bearing walls and other walls. You can see the furniture as well. Everything was very, very tasteful and done with purpose. And throughout this space, I should also say, throughout the library, there are over 1,200 internet terminals, which really emphasizes the fact that this is a library of the future. And I'll get to information design in just a bit. Again, we're taking a look at the uh, first floor just from the second floor area. Let's continue then on the second floor. I'm going to show you some of this uh, these spaces. Again, this is the 21st century collections. And I think what you'll notice from this floor and looking at the design, looking at the architecture, is that the emphasis is on the future. And I think one of the things that was so exciting uh, for me about the library was the fact that they emphasized they wanted to envision moving towards the future and also to exist within it in the present as as contradictory as that that might indeed sound and you can see here then on the second floor how they very thoughtfully have designed the stacks these look nothing like your typical stacks in a library when I think of a library I think of wood uh, you know, creaky wood, uh, decaying wood, very austere, functional, utilitarian type of design. And they've taken that and completely uh, bursted beyond that particular mold or beyond that vision and created something entirely new and I would say definitely future looking. And part of that future looking spirit is focusing on information design. And I think it's one of the things that they've identified here at the library is that they are in competition with the internet and other forms of entertainment, social media, you name it, all the stuff that young people and old people deal with in their everyday lives. So throughout the library you have various uses of technology. In this case we see some touch screens that are used here to establish a connection with the guest uh, through their 
program, the Friends of the Library, which is a donation program. And so the fact that they focus on information design, I think, is key in terms of envisioning what a library of the future indeed looks like. And as I mentioned earlier, they also have throughout the library over 1,200 um, internet ports and Wi-Fi available for the guest. And here you could see the library catalogs that you might expect uh, in any library. I want to suggest to you though that it's not just information design that they've succeeded on here. It's information design combined with theming. And this is a look into one of their multimedia rooms. And I'll show you here in just a bit, they've actually themed it quite uh, effectively with uh, various flora here, succulents, and uh, there are, uh, you know, tables that also carry this theme in terms of, of those particular plants. And so this is another way that I think they've used uh, some thoughtful design, even the floors, if you look at the floors there as well, some incredibly thoughtful design in terms of thinking about not just offering austere and staid forms of technology, but giving the guests technology plus forms of theming, which makes for a very, very exciting mix at the library. Now earlier I talked about the uh, focus on local history, so I wanted to show you a bit of this uh, within the library itself. Previously I showed you the outside. So celebrating the local I think is an important aspect of any themed or immersive space. Again, as I suggested earlier, it gives the guests the sense that he or she matters, particularly if they are uh, locals who commonly frequent the space. And in some of the criticisms that I read of the library, there was concern that they were focusing too much on creating a regional destination hub with the library as opposed to focusing on local citizens. And I think that indeed they focused here on the importance of local citizens by emphasizing the city uh, as we saw with the illumination sculpture outside and also then with this local history library within the uh, library itself. As we talk a little bit more about imagining the future, I think for me what was so exciting about the Cerritos Millennium Library was the fact that they thought about not existing only in the present. They thought about envisioning a mission, a design, an approach to space, an approach to placemaking and experiences that focused on this idea of being future looking and forward looking. And so we'll take a last look here then at some of these spaces on the second floor. You specifically see the computer center here. You see some images of that. Again, very thoughtful design in terms of how they thought about creating a space that's very welcoming. And this was a highly, um, very busy, highly used space on the day of my visit. And also here just outside the um, computer area, you see some of the artwork and, and one of the reception areas. I'm going to focus back here then on the map and again talk about the fact that in creating this 21st century collection, this 21st century space, they have this vision of the future. And you see this certainly with the very modern design, um, very prominent as you enter just here off the elevator, you see this is the 21st century floor. Again, very forward looking, thinking about the future. I take a look at one more space here. And these are the study rooms. And these were sort of an aside. I, I didn't see them at first, but these were themed with uh, various writers of the future. Again, keeping with this very sleek, futuristic, aerodynamic approach to design, as you can see here, uh, in keeping with, with the titanium look of the outside. So you have Jules Verne and you also have Nikola Tesla in terms of focusing on uh, innovators or writers who were very much future lucking in terms of their orientation. And I have to say that in uh, reminiscing a bit about my visit to the Cerritos Millennium Library, I was thoroughly astounded by what I saw. Uh, it wasn't one of the most exciting libraries in the world, it was one of the most exciting themed or immersive spaces in the world. And indeed, uh, it would easily make my top 10 lists in terms of the most exciting themed and immersive spaces uh, anywhere. So I hope you enjoyed this video tour and I hope you get a chance to see the Cerritos Library. Hope you enjoyed this video feature today here at the Cerritos Public Library and come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.